Morning. Happy Friday, folks. Glad to see you. We've gotten through another week with the Wild Pals and sciencing, and it's Friday. And hopefully you enjoyed all of the videos that were put out um, this week. I'm here with um, my friend, the Yeti. He's going to keep, oh, wow, awesome. Um, one of the things that we've been uh, talking about recently over online and Facebook is um, ways that you can help us. And, and there are three main ways that you can help oh wow right you know them like us share us and support us um and you'll see how you can support or donate in so many manners uh, across all the platforms that we have going on right now so um hopefully you had a good week um and uh it was eventful and you learned some things and um, you did some sciencing at home um today we're going to do um, a little bit of a weather experiment so we're going to talk about atmospheric pressure, right? Um, and uh, it's Earth Month. So why not do something, you know, revolving around the Earth and, and the weather and, and the manner in which we go about. Now, today you probably woke up. I don't know if my buddy Rocky in Vegas is, is watching. I don't know what the weather is there in Vegas. Um, I do know that I woke up today to some snow. Snow. Just a week ago, we were outside, you know, in the sunshine. So, again... Youngstown, Ohio, you can see all four seasons in one day. So maybe this afternoon it'll be 75 and, and sunny. Who knows? Um, in any case, um, this is going to be a weather experiment. It's going to center around um, the atmospheric pressure. We're going to make a barometer. Now, barometers are used to measure whether the, the pressure outside is high or low. So obviously, if we get high pressure outside, it's going to be a fairly chilly day, cloudy, probably some sun outside. Um, if the pressure is low outside, then you're probably going to see a lot more clouds. Um, we're going to see probably chances for rain, right? So now by no means do we want to take away um, the jobs over at WFMJ. Our wonderful weather people over there, hi, Miss M, hi, Mr. Andrew, they do a fantastic job. But this is your opportunity to sort of get your foot in the door on learning how to predict some of the weather without searching on your little device, right? Because you can easily go on the weather app and it could tell you for the next 275 days what the weather is going to be like. Or if you're like me and old, right, you just reference a farmer's almanac. Uh, and that goes way farther out than just a few hundred days. Um, but in any case, this is a really neat experiment. Again, we're going to use stuff you find around your own house. Very simple, very easy for little hands to manipulate. Let's see, Renee's here. Renee was playing in the snow. I understand. Hopefully you can build a snow angel out there, right? Right, make some snowballs. Um, Christine, we do have snow. We do have snow, uh, it, not a lot of accumulation, but we do have snow. And it's funny because I was just talking about how we may have the opportunity to sort of predict what's going to happen or our little ones can predict sort of what the weather's going to be out there. So one of the things I want to start off by saying is we're going to sort of make this a challenge. I want to see, I want, I want to challenge you guys out there in TV land, you know, uh, and we're going to do a little challenge. So we're going to make a barometer today and then over the next few days, you know, maybe the week uh, when I come on on Monday or on Friday, I want to see a video or a picture of how well your barometer predicted the weather, right? So I want to see whose barometer reflected the most, right? Whether it was the most, whether we talk about like it being a very high pressure outside or low pressure outside. And I'll show you in a second how we're going to read this. But in any case, let's go down here. I'm going to move the camera down and I'm going to show you the materials that you need for this. So obviously you need a cutting utensil, probably just a pair of scissors. Um, Need a rubber band, right? Or something elastic, something that we can wrap around the top of our container, okay? And, and in this manner, um, today we're gonna use a, a little jam jar. Um, there's no jam in this. Actually, this this was a, a, a parfait that we made at home. Some yogurt, some good fruit. It's empty right now. We're gonna use a glass jar. You can use whatever you want. Um, I will say that you're gonna get different results if you use a plastic bottle, if you use a tin can, if you use a glass bottle. Obviously, I'm, uh, the, the tighter the seal and the ability for you to be able to seal off that air pressure inside this container or jar, you're going to get better results, okay? All right. Christine, hi. How are you? Good to see you. 
Um, plastic bottles. If you want to use a plastic bottle, I wouldn't recommend just trying to cover the top of this. I would recommend cutting the bottle in half and using either the bottom. You could try to use the top. I've never used the top, but you could try. But I would cut the bottom off and just use the bottom part, okay? You could use a tin can, an old coffee can, green beans, whatever you want. Obviously, you're going to need to take the lid off. So we want the open container. So whatever you want. You're also going to need um, something elastic to put over the top of that container, whether it comes in the latex glove form, rubber glove, um, again, balloons you can use, anything to be able to cover that top, okay, so we give a little bit of tautness to the top of that, that container. Um, you want to use either um, a shish kebab skewer, you can use a pencil for this, straws will work, whatever you feel has the capability of extending out what we would call a lever. Now, I will say this, um, a lever is a simple machine. The longer the lever, the better results you're going to get. But again, try it out on a short scale. If you want a, a smaller lever and you just want this part, that's fine. Extend it out a little bit. It's however you want it to be. Obviously, we're not weather casters here. We leave that to the professionals, right? But it's really neat to see the change here, and it's going to come in very minute amounts, okay? It's not going to be a super big fluctuation in this, but you'll still be able to see the atmospheric pressure, okay? And it's really neat to ins instant that in children at a very early age, teaching them about, uh, about what a barometer is and the weather pressure and the atmosphere pressure that's out there. So long story short, let's get started. Oh, the other thing that you do need um, is, is a card or a piece of paper or something to write on, okay? Now, I used cardstock. You can use whatever you want. You use a piece of paper. And I will say, I did this two separate ways. You'll see my, my little drawings out there. Hopefully my buddy in, in Vegas is watching Rocky. My artistry is probably taking a turn for the worse. It's going downhill. So um, let's see. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. Alice. Hi, Alice. Not Christine. Okay, my bad. Um, I am at Oh Wow right now. I'm utilizing um, the, the museum as we speak. Um, just because we were here today, we have to check on the building. We're getting some more materials ready for next week and we're dropping off, you know, some materials. So we're doing a lot of things here in the museum today. I'll be out of here shortly thereafter this, this tapes. So, okay, so let's get started. So what we want to do is we want to take our container, whatever it may be. Now, again, you use whatever you want. I'm going to use a glass jar, the jam jar, right? I'm going to take the top off, set that off to the side. Now we want to cover that top. Okay. That top is going to get covered in the way of a latex glove. Now, again, I cut the glove, the fingers off the glove, and then I slid it down the middle, okay? So I came up, all right, obviously there's the bottom of the glove. I cut that open again, and it, it, it makes a skirt. It's like a little skirt, but we want to make sure that we are able to cover the top of our container, okay? So I'm going to take a rubber band here. We're going to just work this around. Now, we want to stretch it. Now, again, I use the word taut. Taut means tight. We don't want to let any air get inside of our container. And what's neat is once we hold the air inside this, obviously when I had the, the skirt off the top of this, the air pressure inside the bottle or the container was the same as the pressure outside. It's the same. Now what's going to happen is that air pressure inside this container is not going to change, but what's going to change is the atmospheric pressure outside the bottle. Okay, and we're going to be able to determine what's going to happen by watching that container, okay, either the top of this either swell up or concave or dip in, okay? And the way that we're going to do that, now my rubber band sits firmly, in, and, and I will say that my bottle has those grooves, screw, remember? We talked a few weeks back about um, one of the simple machines is a screw. Well, that's the lid top of this jar. It really holds my rubber band kind of nice and tight, okay? Taut on the top. Now, you can use whatever you want to have your reader, your pointer, or your lever be what it is. In this instance, okay, I'm going to use a couple of straws, okay? I'm going to use a bigger straw, and then I have a smaller straw that I fit inside this. So watch. We're just going to put this right there. So I have a longer lever. Again, much easier, and it'll be so much more accurate if we can determine accuracy in this, okay? Um, but you can use whatever you want. Again, a shish kebab skewer, if you want to use a pencil, may give you different results. But again, in science, we talk about modifying and trying things out. And if they don't work, 
you, you change them, right? That's the scientific process of inquiry. So do what you feel you want to do. You know, if you don't have straws handy or you don't have pencils handy, use whatever you have, right? Um, and then, of course, the, the fallback is to watch Mr. Andrew and Miss Emily on 21 and see what the weather is going to be like. So, okay. So there's my straw, okay? Very simple. Now, what we need to do is we need to attach this to the top. People have asked me, can we use hot glue? Well, hot glue is very hot, right? So what will happen is it will melt the end of our straw, and it may put a hole in the top of our container or right through that latex glove. So what I found, now my tape dropped on the ground here. Tape works. But what will happen with tape is it may over time start to lose its stickiness. But for this instance, what we can do is we can use it for right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to tape that lever right to the top of what would be our barometer, okay? So if you notice, you have something that looks like this. We've literally made a homemade barometer. Now, obviously, it's not one of your expensive things that you would buy in the store, but it's still going to teach us something, whether the pressure outside of this jar is high or low. Now, remember, earlier I said, I'm going to move my stuff out of the way here, get this out of the way so you guys can see really good. So what I did initially... When I, when I said to you, you need a piece of paper or a card out there or something to write on, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have your card determine, you know, whether in centimeters or inches, how high up or how low or farther down your, your lever pointed to. Now, you can use this in, you know, metric terms or in really, really scientific terms, and you can get data you can record oh it went up two centimeters today or it went down three centimeters i chose to make pretty pictures and rocky here's where i reference my my artistry probably has taken a turn for the worse so obviously if it's high pressure outside okay and our barometer points outside right it's going to probably be milder weather pretty or fairly sunny right so that's what those suns so the higher up the barometer goes the higher the sunnier it may be or the more mild the weather may be but if our barometer sits and it starts to go down, and if you notice what I put there, those are storm clouds. When it's going to rain, chances are if it's low pressure, the lower it gets, oh, my goodness, look at that cloud right there. He's so angry, and he's going to drop a lot of a lot of condensation and precipitation on us. And I don't necessarily know if I want rain today, but, again, this will determine that. Now, probably the best thing to do is to tape this to a wall, or you can use one of your containers, right, you can tape it to the back of your container, just like so. Okay, little piece of tape right there. You can tape this to the back of your, your can. You can't tape it to the wall, right? Let me move a little closer here so you guys can see. And then if our barometer sat right here, okay, just like that. So if the pressure of the air outside of the container is lower, then what will happen is this will become, right, this will become swelled up and it'll point down, okay? If the pressure inside, outside the jar becomes higher, then what will happen is this jar and this container will sort of make a concaveness in our glove here and this will move up, okay? Now, again, you're not going to see huge results here. But it should give you a really, really neat determination as to sort of what the weather's going to be like. Now, today, try it out today. See what's going to happen. It's probably about 37 degrees. And I know some people out there were talking about the fact that they had some snow, right? Um, I prefer some mild weather. So when my barometer is reading, I just permanently put something underneath it so it's always pointing to that sun. So, but in any case, really neat way to um, talk about weather on a very binary form. Um, very simple, simple experiment that you can do, again, using things in your own home. Um, that was the experiment today. Um, I know Miss Kelly did something with the body yesterday. Uh, Miss Ella and her, and her dad were doing the dad jokes and telling, and telling stories. They're fantastic. And I will say they make a good team. I've always said uh, over the past couple of weeks, they need to take that show to the road. So Mr. Poland, Ella, um, you guys, fantastic. Keep it up. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying it yourself. Um, again, it's been a month. 
it went pretty quickly, didn't it? Let's see who's um, who's out on the on the World Wide Web here. Um, it says, does the can have to be metal? R Riley, no, you don't have to use a, a metal can. You can use a plastic bottle. You know, obviously, um, if we have plastic bottles lying around, you can cut that um, and you can use that bottom there. You you utilize whatever you have in your home. Okay, uh, great question. Um, Oh, hi, Rebecca. Sorry, Renee's up there. Again, I just see names. I'm saying hello. So, hello, how are you? Miss Miss Crow, hi, Pam. Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, <laughs> all right, so you guys are out there in TV land, and hopefully, again, if you can get outside, do your sciencing outside, enjoy the weather. Um, this has been super fun for me, um, albeit something I don't normally do and I'm not accustomed to. So I hope that um, I'm doing a good job <laughs> getting the information. Um, I'd rather do this on a personal basis, but again, patience, it's a virtue, right? Patience, we'll be together again sooner, not later. Um, three ways that you can help us out. You can like us on Facebook, uh, please share us on Facebook um, or support us. And, and you can do that in however manner you feel is comfortable for you. Um, I, it's funny, I, I, I literally was going through old baseball cards that I had downstairs and I figured, you know what, all my commons, anything that's not worth something, I'm just going to bring them in. So I brought in a whole box of baseball cards. I know you guys that have been in InspireWorks utilize those cards to manufacture something and our little manufacturers like to build towers. Baseball cards serve a wonderful purpose for doing that. So I'm donating all my common, not my good cards, but my common cards uh, for you guys to enjoy um, again, this has been wonderful. You guys are great. Love you. Miss you. Remember, we're still here. Search the web, pull down those drop down tabs, find some educator resources, family resources, community resources, keep sciencing. And I will see you Monday and I will see you next week with a great big smile on my face because we're going to keep sciencing. All right. Have a fantastic day. Say bye to the Yeti. Mr. Yeti. He never changes his look. I don't know what it is. All right, guys. Have a great Friday.